I think we have some very serious things to talk about here, the escalation in the Middle East. Um, first question, we're going to get dig a bit more deep into it because you're one of the first people really highlighting the risk when it comes to Lebanon, uh, when it comes to the oil market. But is the risk premium? Is it in the oil market right now? We're just talking about WTI below 70 bucks a barrel, wow. Brent crude below 75 bucks a barrel. That seems to be a key sentiment level. I mean, this is so interesting, Frank. We were on last week, this time last week, right. and we were talking about the intensifying Israeli airstrikes in Lebanon and the potential for an escalation. And we looked at the oil price and we said, look, it's not pricing in a full Middle East war. And I think for many oil market participants, when this war began in October, they were looking to see a supply disruption. It did not materialize, and they've largely faded the story. But the question we really have to look at right now is, did the strike on Hassan Nasrallah, on these senior Hezbollah operatives and Iranian forces as well that were operating out of Lebanon, is that a trigger for potential Iranian intervention in this war? The Iranians have talked a big game, but we have not seen them yet really deploy their military right. capabilities in support of their most important proxy, Hezbollah. Yeah, we've talked about this quite a bit here on the show with you and with other people. It's a proxy war. Iran yes. seems to be funding all these attacks in the Red Sea. Um, Yemen is one area. Lebanon is another area. I, I do want to ask Iraq as well. I mean, right. they have, it's our axis of resistance. They are the ATM for all of these regional militias and terrorist organizations. And the real question, Frank, right now is, does Benjamin Netanyahu think that the moment is now to go after Iran in a major way, set back its nuclear program, you know, hit its key economic assets? Does this end at Lebanon? Does this end at Yemen? Or is there a path to Tehran becoming front and center for the Israeli government? Let's dig into this a bit. Uh, over the last week, uh, according to Lebanon, one million people have been displaced. Yes. Um, they say they're the hardest hit area in the region. And we also had the assassination of the Hezbollah leader. Um, how does an investor price that in? I mean, how do you actually price in this, these, these developments and the fact that President Biden is going to speak to the Israeli prime minister? Right. But, but how do you really assess what the risk premium is? Because remember, we're well off the lows of April where we saw, again, direct conflict. Right. How do you price this in? I think, again, oil market participants are saying, look, we have two wars going on right now. Don't forget, we still have Russia, Ukraine. We have this war in the Middle East. But they're really looking to see, is there some supply disruption? Right. I mean, is there any physical oil at risk? But, and to date, we haven't seen that. But what's the risk premium just for the specter of that? I know you said we haven't seen it, but there's certainly a lot of risk there. So where should oil be at so, in your mind? Well, here's the question. Is there a pathway to seeing potential action in the Straits of Hormuz, the most you know, important waterway for the transport of oil? Those are the kind of things that you would be looking for. You look for to see if Iran going to do something like they did in 2019, hitting pipelines, hitting tankers, hitting a major oil facility like Abcake. Again, for now, the Iranians look like they're holding you know, their forces back. But the question is, if this turns in a manner where they are directly targeted, if they decide that a ground invasion of Lebanon is coming, do we see Iran enter the war in a bigger way? But market participants are saying, look, Chinese demand has been less than stellar. We have a potential specter of more OPEC barrels okay. coming onto the market in December. So they're looking at a market and saying, it looks well supplied. Okay. I'm going to fade this story. You're leading me to my next question. Also, I want to mention there's 40,000 U.S. troops in the region. Yes. According to NBC News, they're looking to bolster that. So yes. that's another factor when you start moving in U.S. forces. Oh. But wait, we, we got to, I want to okay. pivot because we got to touch on this. Chinese stimulus last week. We, sent, we saw stimulus. Right. Um, a lot of people see that as pretty much the bazooka a lot of people were calling for, or at least leaning towards right. that direction. What does that mean to the oil market? I'm going to ask you. you didn't want to put a number on it when it came to the Middle East. But when it comes to Chinese demand, in your mind, how much can that raise the price of oil when we're talking about Brent crude and maybe even I mean, WTI? we're going to just have to be looking at things like what are Chinese import numbers look like? What are refiner utilization rates looking like in China? Like those are the actual like physical market indicators that we'd be looking for. I also think on the physical market, we had a story come out last week in the FT saying the Saudis were essentially backing away from a $100 price target. I don't think they've had that price target for a no. while. But the question is, are we going to potentially see more OPEC barrels coming onto the market? Those are the issues that are right. front and center for By investors way, right our, now. Our Dan Murphy clarified that that's not an official price it, that's target. What I'm saying. I don't yeah. think it's ever been a yeah, price I, I think that you're I saying think, the same thing. But I like, think but the, for the market, okay. they thought, oh, my gosh, does that right. FT article mean that it's going to be 2014 show, all over again? You know I love you, but we got to go. One okay. last thing. What's the next Chinese economic report we should be looking to to see if demand is picked up for oil? I mean, I would say pay close attention to what we see on import numbers. Like okay. Those are the, the import the numbers one. and refinery utilization.